Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight video and it's on a fragrance from the house of Francesca Bianchi that came out in 2022, so a couple years ago now. This is called Libertine Neroli. Now, um, Libertine Neroli is uh, a very interesting take on a Sheepra that also has like a Neroli note in the top, which you don't always see. And um, so, so uh, the scent, according to the website from Francesca Bianchi, basically says that um, the scent represents uh, the abandonment of pleasures or luxury intended as enjoyment of life with a sense of freedom and relaxation. The protagonists are Neroli in its refined lightheartedness, along with the sophisticated and su seductive leather, excuse me, um, a Shepra structure represents, sorry, a, a Shepra structure presents an animalic facet that makes this fragrance seductive and intense as well as sophisticated and somehow vintage. The references that inspired this creation are the glorious places of Italian social life of the past years. I'm guessing she means since COVID or I don't know what she means the past years. The carefree atmosphere of the Roman Dolce Vita, the sense of freedom of Weiler's Roman holiday, or the refined yet casual vibe of Mingala's The Talented Mr. Ripley. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is the first fragrance devoted entirely to a specific ingredient. This composition is conceived not as a simple rendition of a flower. It is a complex composition only centered on Neroli as the major ingredient. Because of this, it has great longevity, body, and structure. Okay, so you know her spiel by now. All of her fragrances come in that 30 mil bottle. They sell for like $108 or $110 or something. Um, $108, excuse me. I was right the first time. And so this, I will tell you this, this opens up with a brutal note of Neroli. And I say brutal because it really is. It's um, very green and pretty cheap smelling. It's like a green floor cleaner smell. Um, and, uh, you know, I should probably reapply this so I can get the opening again. But um, I have worn this to bed once before. And by the way, I forgot to say thank you to whoever sent me this um, this sample. You know, these samples just arrive and uh, sometimes I just forget who sent them. So whoever my perfume god person is who sent this to me, thank you very much. Um, so let's just do a fresh spray so I can get that opening again because I've been wearing it for the last three or four hours. Uh, and so even though I hate the opening, I feel like I should spray it again for you guys. So it 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 is a smell that Neroli, when it's done right, it's beautiful. And Neroli is actually a very expensive ingredient. But um, when it's done wrong, God help us. And I will tell you this, the opening of this, to me, I do not like the opening. It opens up like a spicy, green, sort of floral, but soapy floor cleaner is the best way to describe it. I can't describe it any other way. God, the opening of that is, I do not like the opening. Okay, uh, I've got the dry down here, but I do not like the opening. It is, um, I really despise it, to be honest with you, the opening. But what's interesting is that Francesca Bianchi, ambery sort of, Iris Benzoin Accord that she puts in everything in probably too big of a dose, right? And she overdoses in many of her fragrances that specific Francesca Bianchi DNA, which some people absolutely love. I'm on the fence about it. I think she's a little bit of a lazy creator because I feel like um, she uses that Accord in everything and then just kind of plays around with that. But um, her, her fragrance... DNA here, that overdose, which I give her a hard time about, and I think it's probably deserved, uh, comes to save the day a little bit, because um, not enough to make me like the opening, mind you, but enough to make it bearable. Without that undertone of iris and that Sheepra base beginning to bubble up with the labdanum and the benzoin and all the stuff you've smelled in many of her uh, releases, especially in other Sheepras, uh, it would be, I think, an unbearable opening for me with the way that she did the Neroli. But what ends up happening is that soapy, fresh, floral Neroli thing um, mixes with Petit Grand, which adds this sort of sticks and twigs. And um, just imagine like um, maybe like the, a woodier citrusy aspect, if you will. And it, um, um, along with the citrusy freshness of bergamot, uh, and it just feels like she kind of put that Neroli citrusy thing on top of this very heavy based fragrance. This is a very base heavy fragrance. And it's a Shepra, so it's pretty complex. I will give her that. When she says that 
the composition is not conceived as just a simple rendition of a flower. It's complex. I do feel that is true, but complex in a way where I feel like if you've smelled her accords and other fragrances before, you have a idea of what 75% of this smells like, if that makes sense. And I don't think a niche fragrance, you should be able to just in your mind, imagine what it smells like if you've never smelled it before. But um, I think that if I wanted this sort of neroli petit grand thing just plopped on top of um, on top of a base that I enjoy a little bit more. Well, I do enjoy this base is the problem. We'll get to that. But there's a fragrance that I own that uses neroli. It's a designer fragrance. It was created by Michelle Almarac. It's called Louis by Rochas. This is discontinued. Came out 21 years ago. But um, I'm actually a big fan of this and I'll review this one of these days. And I'm lucky to have one of the big 100 mil bottles. These are very hard to come by. So I got a um, tester that doesn't have a cap or maybe I, the person just lost the cap. But uh, I think it's a, actually it is a tester. Yeah, it's a tester. You can see demonstration right there. But this is a very interesting take on Neroli. Um, but this is like Neroli with a sort of woodier um, scaffolding. So it uses more like cedar wood and sycamore wood. and But there's still some vanilla and ambers in the base. And so the two fragrances remind me a little bit of each other. This has Abbey Rouge sort of little... Um, maybe just wisps of Abbey Rouge here and there come and go, but that Neroli in here, I think for a designer, and Michelle Almarac is a master to be fair, I don't think Francesca Bianchi can come close to Michelle Almarac's level of blending and sort of what he brings to the table, but if you are a Neroli fan, okay, and you like masculine fragrances, I would definitely urge you to check out Louis. There are differences because here in uh, Libertine Neroli, you get much more of this sort of um, powdery iris, which begins to come to the forefront. I would say probably within maybe like um, uh, half an hour or so. This sort of, um, the bits of the Neroli and Petit Grand combo, which I really dislike, okay? I don't like the way that the opening is executed here. But the bits that I really dislike um, seem to have been replaced by that traditional Francesca Bianchi Accord, which sort of just roars up from the bottom, from the base, and takes over a little bit. You still smell the, the Neroli and Petit Grand deeper into the dry down, but that harsh synthetic floor cleaner, soapy Neroli bit, which I don't like, slightly green, slightly floral, slightly citrusy, starts to go away. That, that piece of the Neroli, um puzzle in this particular opening of Libertine Neroli, really it's the first 15 to 30 minutes that I'm like, God, you know, it's, um, th there's just something in this that bothers me. But if you can get, to, if you can survive that and you like Francesca Bianchi's creations, uh, if you can survive it, the dry down for this gets better. The longer it stays on your skin, the longer it cooks on your skin, the better it gets in my personal opinion. Um, and Francesca Bianchi is one of those houses where I never really loved her work, but I never hated it either. There's something kind of in the middle. Uh, I'm just kind of meh about it is really the thing. And sometimes when you have a big collection, I've found that you start saying to yourself, well, why would I buy this when I could just wear this, right? You know, I, I could just reach for this and wear it. I already have it in my collection. And so when you have a big collection and you start um, having fragrances that check different boxes and you start making connections between fragrances, that's why I did that fragrance um, video um, I did a, a fragrance video series, a short one called Connections, Fragrance Connections. You can go check that out. I think there's even a playlist for it for the two or three videos I did, but um, where I just connect fragrances that remind me of each other here and there. Uh, and, and so that's one of the reasons I did those videos is because sometimes fragrances just give you a connection where you would think there's no connection, even if they're not necessarily similar. Sometimes you just get something that reminds you of this or that or this note. And the Neroli in here does that with, with Rochas Louis. Um, the fragrance, other than the Neroli note, is quite different. Uh, but they just sort of remind me a bit of, a, a bit, um, of each other, right? Not enough where you're going to see it as like a similar as in Parfumo or something like that. But they're close enough where you just get a little bit of a connection. And so what ends up happening is this powdery iris note, which Francesca Bianchi goes on and on and on about, about how high quality her iris is and stuff like that. The iris note in here begins to emerge stronger within about the 30 minute mark. 
And I think that powdery iris note, which to be fair, it is nice. I, I like the way it's executed here, begins to emerge. And um, it, it takes on a slight vintage feel. And I think she's right in her little write-up where she says something along the lines of, sophisticated and somehow vintage and and there is something somehow vintage in here uh especially if you're uh familiar with fragrances like um tabac blanc for example by caron or maybe i thought of something like this queer de lancome by lancome which is on my to review list for you guys this is also discontinued just like rochas louis sorry about that but um uh queer de lancome is an iris uh, leather, but this uses more Styrax and a couple other things. The floral notes are even more, I would say, amped up here. There's no Neroli or anything like that in, in Queer de Lancome, but there is a beautiful iris, Ylang Ylang, Jasmine, and Hawthorn. So lots of florals. It's like a big floral leather, um, and, the, and the Hawthorn gives that white leather bag feel to it. The Styrax gives a little bit of waxiness to the leather, um, and, and so I think this is a feminine targeted fragrance, but I have no problem wearing Queer de Lancome. I love iris leathers though, if, if you haven't noticed. And so that's actually what kicks in, in, um, Libertine Neroli. There is a little bit of a vintage feel and the leather and the iris begin to sort of come up a little bit and take over that Neroli note, which I'm just like, oh, I kind of go from, uh, you know, it makes me kind of go from to, hmm. You know, it's interesting. It goes, and this is why it's important you don't judge fragrances by the first second that's on your skin because this would be a spray hell no for me, right? Hard pass. Uh, and actually, there's no way I would ever buy this fragrance because, like I said, when you have a very large collection, sometimes it just gets to the point where you're like, I just wear something else. Um, you know, you really have to, when you have a very big collection, it comes to the point and you're collecting lifespan, let's say, where something has to just absolutely grab you. You know, 90, 9 out of 10s even aren't good enough. You want to buy the 10 out of 10 fragrances for you that just absolutely grab you. Otherwise, you know, you're like, what's the point? I have other, so many other things to wear, right? And so that's one of the, one of the other issues with a big collection. Um, and, and, and I don't want to give the impression that the Neroli completely dis disappears because it doesn't. The Neroli does last into the dry down. You can smell it hours in. You can smell that sort of contrast that Neroli gives between soapy freshness and floral. This this Neroli feels slightly green. It feels slightly like um like it's a like it's a newer Neroli. I don't know if newer Neroli is green or not, but there's this you know um uh you know fresh green floral side to the to this neroli as well and and good neroli does do that there's a contrast of, of neroli where it's back and forth between floral and soapy um and sometimes green and spicy and um and you get that here a uh, little bit of white floral sometimes but it, this the the white floral feel of the neroli here doesn't put me off at, at all uh, I like the way that the spicy geranium comes in, and I think that's where the spiciness is coming from. One of the spiciness, um, along with this very textured oak moss and the um, the uh, textured oak moss in the base, of course, with the labdanum and leather, make it feel a little bit like a vintage leather sheeper, like I was saying earlier, but it just feels like that neroli note... Uh, doesn't disappear, but it settles down after half an hour to, let's just say an hour to be safe, okay? After an hour, it settles down to the point where it blends with the iris and the geranium and that heavier base that I was mentioning earlier. It just blends in a way where um, it settles down to the point where uh, it settles down enough for me to, let's say, enjoy it a little bit, okay? Um, it settles down to the point where it's enjoyable. It never really, the Neroli does, I think, disappear deep into the dry down, uh, because it's a more volatile sort of floral note, but, um, it, it, that unbalanced floor cleaner bit does go away, okay? Uh, it, it blends better into the composition, let's put it that way. And the labdanum in here, the labdanum, which she loves using heavy ambers and labdanum and benzoin, if you smelled her other compositions, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The labdanum here feels slightly smoky and slightly leathery at the same time, which is exactly how I like my labdanum done. Um, and, and so as I was playing with this fragrance, um, it's interesting because I was looking at the name, right? 
libertine neroli. And I think a lot of people, when they sort of read something like that, they gloss over. They gloss over the libertine part. They go straight to neroli and they just see neroli and that's what they focus on, right? And so I looked up libertine. Uh, libertine has a couple different dictionary definitions. The number one dictionary definition, uh, according to Oxford, is a person, a person, especially a man, who behaves without moral principles or a sense of responsibility, especially in sexual matters. That's number one. Number two is a person who rejects accepted opinions in matters of religion, a free thinker, if you will. So a free thinker in, in matter of religion is also a libertine, if you will. Uh, and that's where the name, I think, libertarian comes from as well. Uh, if you're a libertarian in your view of the world economy, all that good stuff. Um, and But I think people gloss over that. And it's interesting because Francesca Bianchi, I think, in her fragrances, she sort of almost takes advantage of this... Um, like sexual side of marketing, almost to the point where it seems like a ploy to me. And, you know, you see pictures on her website, like pictures of her ass in jeans or, um, you know, stuff like that. And I think that she kind of does the, the sexual exploitation marketing in a way that uh, sometimes there's like a classiness to it, you know, and sometimes there's a, um, how do you say it, it? It almost puts me off. You know what I mean? She does it in a, in a crude kind of way. And I don't think she has very much finesse as she's, as she's using the sexual side of advertising to, to push her fragrances. And uh, I don't know, maybe that plays better in, in Europe than it does here in the United States, but it just seems very crude and crass to me. And so even though I'm talking about a few things that I don't like about her brand, the other thing I don't like about this fragrance that uh, as it's stayed on my skin for the last three or four hours, um, it, I noticed it the first time around, but I really noticed it this time because within the last month or so, I reviewed one of her fragrances called Tiger Tiger. Uh, and Tiger Tiger has this sweet peach thing in here. And there is something a little sweet, uh, maybe just with the, um, it almost, you know, if you blindfolded me, I would guess maybe there is like a peach note in this Shepra, like, um, you know, Mitsuko, Peach, or uh, maybe, you know, like a, um, I would guess Peach, actually, but it could be maybe Peach and Plum combined. I don't know, but it does feel like there's a little bit of a fruity sort of accord that you get in Tiger Tiger. And then, of course, that Shepra creation, which is that Neroli is just on top when I called her maybe like a lazy creator. It really reminds me of the Shepra construction of something like Etruscan water. If you ever smelled Etruscan water, there's almost no getting away from it. I mean, the um, the similarities are, are very, very close. So that's the other thing with her brand, is I feel like when you're a niche house, that's the reason why I really rate Papillon. Where's Papillon? Papillon's right. Where are you? Oh, I must have put you out. Oh, no, here you are. Um, so that's one of the reasons I really rate Papillon, like as a competitor, right? These two women who, who both own their own brands, if I was gonna give my hard-earned money and you can see I have given my hard-earned money to both of them. But at this point in my journey, if I was going to give my hard-earned money to one of these women, it would be Liz Moore's, hands down. Um, I love her creations. They're all, they all don't seem as, I don't want to say that these fragrances weren't as thought out with Francesca Bianchi, but they seem like she's rushing to release it, right? Just I think in 2023, she released another fragrance, Unspoken Musk or something, which I have a sample of, so you'll be hearing about that as well. Um, but the releases for Francesca Bianchi seem to just be coming out because she thinks the market, there will be a certain amount of people if she puts them out. Whereas with Liz Moore's, it feels more artistic. It feels more, you know, she is wanting to create something. And even if she misses out on releasing something this year, it feels like, for her artistic side and to have a fragrance release that she's happy about. She's okay with that. She's okay with her brand missing out, leaving some dollars on the table to capture or create something beautiful in the artistic sense. This is Anubis, by the way, which is one of my favorite Papillon fragrances and I will review soon for you. Um, there's so many amazing fragrances that I want to review. That's the other problem with just buying to buy. You know, when you have a big collection, sometimes when you, when you get started, 
in the frag in the fragrance game, you just buy everything. Everything you hear, you just want to buy, right? And then you begin to get more and more and more selective until you get to a point where you almost like want to put the brakes on and you just want to make sure anything that comes into the collection, there is a reason for it. There's a purpose, you're gonna love it, that kind of thing. So, like today, my scent of the day is MDCI Sheeper Palaton, probably one of the best fragrances that I don't have a full bottle of. A Bertrand du Chafour masterpiece up there with uh, Jubilation 25 for men as his greatest creation. Um, this is just stunning. Uh, I wore it to work today. God, that animalic side of, of Sheeper Palaton. There's a little bit of this smokiness, a little bit of this old school animalic side to this Sheeper. So this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It's so hard for me to give $108 to Francesca Bianchi for something like this when there's sheepers out there that, um, you know, I'm still trying to understand and wrap my head around. I'd love to do a review of Sheeper Palaton, but my God, I mean, it's so complex. Everything from the fresh florals, the animalic notes, the orientals combined with the Sheeper, it's it's unbelievable. And, and so I think that's the problem that Francesca Bianchi has. And even as I'm saying all these things I don't like about her brand, I must admit, this right here, this is what, 20 minutes old I sprayed this on? 15 minutes old? And this is now three or four hours old? I really like the dry down. Even though I've said all that about it, I'll tell you what, once that, the rolling note goes away, which I'm not the biggest fan of in this release, I like the dry down. The dry down is good. I don't think I would buy a fragrance that I have to wait hours for to really appreciate, but... Um, but I have to say, that's why you don't judge a book by its cover. That's why you wear it, especially on your skin. Sometimes fragrance smells different if you spray it on a card or something like that. It also can sometimes smell different if you're smelling a bunch of things at once. If you just test the whole line, things get lost in the shuffle. You really have to take your time and, you know, one day test this, the next day test that. That's that's the way that I prefer to do it, where I can give all my focus to something. Um, so, anyways, I mean, that's just kind of my... Um, my thought on a fragrance that feels very Francesca Bianchi-esque. Um, again, I'm kind of like in the meh phase with her brand. It's, 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 um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad fragrance. I could see if you're a huge Neroli lover that you would love this. But for me, especially since I have some Nerolis that I still want to do videos on and get to wear more and know more, there's no way I would buy this. Do I appreciate getting to know it? Yeah, I appreciate getting to know it and do the video. Uh, but this is another just sort of middle of the road. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Sometimes that's just how it goes, you know? People love negative reviews. They love positive reviews. But many fragrances you're going to test are sort of in the middle. And and that's okay. That's There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Robes used Mark from the Robes 08 channel used to call this a sample again fragrance. Um, you know, maybe get another sample down the road and see if your feelings are the same. So, you know... For me, that's just kind of, uh, that's why I'm at with the brand. This is my only Francesca Bianchi bottle, and I, uh, I, I'll i review this as well on the channel one of these days for you guys, Etruscan Water, but, you know, these two both being Sheepras, there's no way I would go out and run and buy this when I have this, and then some of the other Sheepras we discussed, and leather fragrances, and all, and all the in-herb competition with other niche brands like Papillon, and there's just so much out there nowadays is really what it comes down to as a frag head, and you really have to be um, discretionary with your spending. You have to, well, I guess I shouldn't tell you how to spend your own money. You know how to spend your money, but if you're on any bit of a limited budget, you know, you, um, uh, you should be discretionary. If you have enough money, you can just go buy everything. Just go buy everything, but 99.9% .9 of people are not in that boat, right? Uh, and, and so, uh, that's, hopefully these videos are helpful where you can get an idea of what the fragrance is like, you know, a little bit of a deeper dive. That's why I like to do these. And also I like to do them because I'll probably never own a bottle of this. So because of that, um, you know, this is my chance to kind of put my thoughts out there on a fragrance that I will probably never talk about again on the channel, you know? So that's just kind of, um, that's also my reason for doing these, uh, late night insight videos, but I worked all day. Came off work. Actually, I went shopping at Costco after getting off work. Then I came home, and now it's 8 o'clock, 8.40. I'm doing this review for you guys, so long day. But I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, let me know what you think of the brand of Francesca Bianchi. If you think I'm over the target with my uh, assessment of the brand, you know, if there's others I should try. I've, I've done a handful of reviews on the channel now. I think this is my fourth or fifth Francesca Bianchi review on the channel, so there is a playlist. You can go watch them all, um, but appreciate everyone's support. 
you know, thank you to the kind words for the 800th video yesterday. Here's to the next 800. So cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.